gotta sit. You gotta sit first. Sit, sit. Good girl. We have a dog here that's been hit by a car, so it's medical boarding, but it's all um, it's all for free. This clinic runs under a specific mission. It is animal-centric and it's rights-oriented as well. Um, the rights and the animal-centric uh, um, persuasion kind of permeates everything. What we do focuses strictly on the patient. We try not to use things that are from other species, like we don't carry dead animal foods. Um, nothing that, that's not vegan. Um, except for certain medications which we cannot replace. Say hi! Hi there! Yeah, but she's okay. She's cool with all these cats here. Okay, well we had a client come in with her dog Ginger. He's like a little terrier. Uh, she's fine. She just gets uh, a little bit anxious when she has to have her nails clipped. A lot of times they will be not willing to let you clip their nails. Um, generally we like to have somebody who's holding the animal and then somebody who's clipping, that's ideal. But um, usually we're by ourselves so um, we have to get creative. That's about as far as we can get two nails In the end I had Sarah, who works as a receptionist, help me hold and while I clipped. And clipping um, for dogs, pedicures, you don't want to hit the quick because that'll start bleeding and that's painful. Um, and so you clip right before there and you try and round the edges by clipping the top and sides. Yeah, Ginger was really difficult, really did not like to get her nails clipped. Um, but we still need to get them done, otherwise the animal's going to be um, in discomfort with clacking the nails and it's just going to end up hurting the, the paws in general. So you have to stick with it and we ended up finishing the nails. Alright! Good girl! I don't know why I'm saying good girl. We have all of the current equipment, all of the current medications. We're, we're progressive. By the same token, we focus on the whole animal, which is a concept that's new in the veterinary world. Kitty's hypothermic, hypoglycemic. Okay, you're gonna have just the tiniest little bit. What we're gonna do is rehydrate her. No gagging, no coughing means you're in. And then we're only gonna give her about five cc's. Um, get some good food down her, bring her back up to body temperature, and 50-50. Um, Most of these guys will bounce back in the first couple of hours. The question is whether or not they stay, they stay stable or not, because sometimes when they get to Hypoglycemic, the rest, when you try to bring them back to normal, um, their body can't withstand it. But we'll know in the next probably 12 hours. We also will see the kitten that was hit on the side of the street. Um, the dog that just kind of rolled out of the hills. We work with a lot of the rescues who find these sick, sick, sick dogs or injured dogs and, and frankly these animals don't really have anywhere else to go that can help them um, at a reduced cost. Which we do to the absolute best of our ability, certainly not as much as we would like to. Um, but then I guess there's always somebody who needs you. Being a, a hand, handicapped vet and uh, have plenty of problems, but when I'm here, those problems are gone. Well, I have uh, dementia or Alzheimer's, so it helps keep my brain activated. I'm a disabled vet from the Vietnam War. So, since I can't work, I can do this to help the cats and to help myself. The cats are able to take away the, the pain, and the, the uh, suffering that I go through, and uh, you kind of forget about how Alzheimer's affects you. So this is a good thing to do. Have a pet, forget about your problems. If it's unemployment or physical or mental, whatever it is, just come on down, adopt yourself an adorable pet.
bit by bit, huh? Yeah. All right. So over the course of the day, we're gonna change scrubs again. I've changed probably four or five times a day between medications and diarrhea and vomiting and other things. Just need to keep it clean. She's asleep now. Boys, would you grab me a small, please? Small shirt. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna go see our next patient. She's new to us here. Not feeling so well today. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. So tell me a little bit about what's going on. Yeah, this is Sapphire. This kitty just came in from LA. Has had an eye problem now for about a month that hasn't resolved, which has left it with a certain amount of scarring and damage. So possibility we may lose that eye, but mother's committed to fixing it. So we're going to treat that for the next month and baby it a little bit and see where we go and see if we can't keep her um, with her own with her own eye. I was pretty impressed with the doctor or the vet, how much time she spent with her. The clinic that she went to in LA, they just looked her over really quickly and um, gave us some medicine. So we're gonna start with antibiotics and then we're gonna give her an anti-inflammatory and then we're gonna use the eye ointment. I, I didn't know it was this gonna be, you know, this is what needed to happen to fix this eye. And I think that's probably why this problem is here is because I didn't have the correct information. Now that I have it, I can, you know, uh, go full force and really try to get this fixed. The standard phone call is what do vaccinations cost? Um, and the profession has, has had to focus on that over the last 20, 30 years because animals weren't really in the clinics um, as consistently as they are now. But we've actually gotten to a point where vaccination is, and, and those diseases are somewhat stable, so we have the ability now to focus on other things that are equally important to an animal's health. Okay, this is Kitty Cat and she's 21 years old. She has an infection but her parents can't give her oral medications, so we're giving her an injection of penicillin. We give that a couple times a week, and then they won't have to try and give her pills. There, and that's the end of it, because this is her last injection. You ready, my little old lady? I know. <laughs> She's sassy. I don't. <laughs> All right, baby girl. I'll take her out to her parents. This is the time of day when we start doing our neutering. Today, mainly we have spays and neuters, and today, actually, we have all cats. Spaying and neutering is incredibly important as a procedure in the veterinary field for two reasons. One, it stops a lot of health issues. Uh, cancer, fighting abscesses, behavioral issues as well um, that are just not conducive with our lives. But additionally, it stops reproduction, and that's a more of a public awareness issue in that there are so many kittens and puppies born these days that we just don't have enough homes for them. So we need to stop having all these puppies and kittens and the only way to do that right now effectively is to neuter these guys. So this kitty's a feral, so she's going out back out into the real world. So we notch their ears to let people know that they're ferals and that they've been neutered. This is a girl and since girls are always right, we notch the right ear. I've been in the veterinary field since about the age of 14, and I'm 44. For me, it's being the doctor. Um, not necessarily the technical aspect, which is fascinating, but making somebody better when they were feeling really bad is, is incredibly heartwarming. Um, whenever they get to walk out the front door and feel better, it's a good day.